Now we turn our attention to market moves this morning. Asian stocks tracked U.S. pairs higher as the Federal Reserve's cautious outlook on rates did little to alter Wall Street bulls cooling U.S. inflation also, which swayed traders' sentiment. Stock benchmarks rose in Australia, South Korea and Hong Kong early on Thursday. Japanese shares were mostly flat. Futures contracts on the S&P 500 edged higher in early Asian trading. This comes after the U.S. benchmark topped 5,400 for the first time in its history. Wednesday also marked the 20-month anniversary of the bull market in U.S. stocks. U.S. core consumer price index cooled to the slowest pace in more than three years. Later, the Fed penciled in just one quarter point cut this year, down from three, which was seen in the month of March. U.S. stocks and bonds posted gains overnight as investors took cues from the easing inflation trend rather than a hawkish Fed. Well, Tomo Kinoshita, global market strategist at Invesco Asset Management, said, and I'm quoting here, the net impact of the two events, Fed and CPI, would be positive for Asian central banks and are likely to lead to stronger Asian currencies against the dollar and higher stock prices. Well, the focus will be on Indian stocks after benchmark indices hit fresh intraday highs on Wednesday. The blue chip Sensex index hit a new all-time high of 77,000. The broader Nifty 50 index record, which was a high of about 23,000. Both the indices closed with marginal gains. Fluctuations in Indian shares has risen since the election results and that trend is predicted to continue further. Well, for more on this, we're now being joined by Rahul Arora, CEO, Nirmal Bank Institutional Equities. He's joining us live from Mumbai. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Now, Rahul, can you explain the euphoria behind the Indian markets rally following the sell-off on election result day? So I think, uh, obviously, the re election results were a bit of a setback. I don't think anyone expected the... Uh, incumbent party to be getting a minority. But I think uh, as time went on that day and uh, the subsequent couple of days, uh, and I think the market digested the fact that it has two stable coalition partners, I think it was taken in stride. Uh, I think what's also helped is uh, the subsequent uh, cabinet allocations. I think there's a huge uh, relief in terms of continuity of policy. I think uh, the four large portfolios, uh, finance, external affairs, defense and home, uh, being rested with the uh, incumbent uh, candidates. Uh, so I think there, to a large extent, that you know ensures uh, continuity of policy, uh, and I think uh, overall, uh, I don't think that situation that arose on election day, where people thought this would be a fractured mandate or the incumbent would not be able to form the government, that was laid to rest very quickly. I think as we speak today, the market is at all-time highs, and I think uh, the market is keenly awaiting the budget, which should be presented in the next month, month and a half. Right, Rahul, you speak of how the market is awaiting of the budget, uh, which will be presented in the uh, next month and a half. My next question is to follow up on that. Will the budget be the next big event for investors in India? Uh, it's an interesting question because I think between now and then, there's a lot that will happen. Uh, most, of, most important, of course, is the monsoon. Uh, and I think if we don't have a good rainfall over the next month, a uh, month and a half in the run-up to the uh, budget, uh, we could expect a slightly populist tilt. Uh, I think even if that were to happen, I don't think the market would scoff too much because uh, you would remember not too long back, the RBI issued a dividend to the government of India. Uh, the expectation was about 80 or 90,000 crores and that number was in excess of 2 lakh crores. So I think the government of India has about 0.3 percentage uh, leeway on fiscal deficit were it to even go slightly populist. Uh, but I think uh, the Prime Minister has spoken uh, at length over the last many years about mm. in indigenization, uh, make in India. And I think some of those themes may continue to find resonance in the budget as well. Right. For better understanding, Rahul, if you, if you can just uh, give your assessment on what will the investors look out for in the upcoming budget? So I think, uh, you know, there's been a lot of productive, uh, productivity linked incentive schemes or what we call the PLI schemes for the manufacturing sector in India. Uh, I think the, uh, the investors would want to see a continued uh, intent towards supporting infrastructure, defense and manufacturing in India. Uh, these sectors have been doing well in the run up to the elections and even post the elections, post that one day blip uh, that we saw. 
Uh, I think if there is no material slippage on the fiscal deficit side, I think that will be taken positive. And I think, uh, you know, at the margin, I think anything incremental in terms of spending on the defense sector, uh, because it's been a theme that investors have lapped up, uh, you know, quite aggressively. I think if there is some uh, talk or intent in that direction, at a personal level, of course, I would like to see a little bit more done on the education and the health side. But like I said, I don't know how much leeway the government of India has. But I think the two key things to watch out for would be continuity on taking manufacturing as a percentage of GDP to 25% over a longer period of time and not too much by way of fiscal slippage. I think if these two add up, uh, the tax projections, I think, will be by and large OK, because I think most of the indirect taxes are anyway subsumed into GST. Uh, so I think if you look at a, about a 15% growth in tax income, plus or minus, I think should be okay. So if there are no negative shocks on these three parameters, I think the market will digest the budget pretty well. My last question, uh, question to you, Raul. Apart from the budget, what other big events will markets be tracking in the short term? Right. So I think first, like I said, I think will be the progress of the monsoon over the next month, month and a half, because inflation is still hovering close to 5% as opposed to close to 4%. So that's one. Uh, the second, of course, is going to be the result season, which starts in a month from now. I think the IT companies will probably start declaring around the 8th or 10th of July. Uh, so how the first quarter of this uh, fiscal earnings pan out. Uh, the third, of course, will be, uh, you know, whatever commentary is coming out of the central banks. I think now uh, it's almost given that there'll probably be only one rate cut this year by US and India. Uh, but if there is scope for more, I think that could be, uh, you know, uh, something to watch out for. And lastly, I think uh, the union budget. So mm. I think over the next uh, 30 to 45 days, I think these three or four things will play a key role in uh, determining market action. Right, absolutely. Thank you so much, Rahul, for joining us on the show with your insights on this. Thank you.